Hello and welcome back. Today we are doing an iguana sitting on an iron with ice skates, an incense stick, ice cream and an ice cube. The colours I have on my palette today are titanium white, red oxide, midnight blue, black and burnt umber. Kicking off week I with the iron. I've chosen an old antique style iron because I really love anything antique and anything old and a little bit rusty and imperfect. And because I'm doing the old antique style iron, I'm not going to do it in the traditional cast iron color. I'm going to do it in this rusty brown color. I want it to have the effect that it's kind of been sitting in your back shed for decades. After a quick base coat in a watered down burnt umber, it's now time to go in with the details. The main color that I'm using on the iron is the burnt umber with a little bit of red oxide in places for that rust effect. I'm adding in a few different colors and a little bit of gray and then fluffing it out with a dry brush. This helps add a little bit of wear and tear and add some texture and interest. With the majority of the iron done, I'm now going in with a few finer details. I'm adding some highlights and going back to that red oxide for the rust effect. Hi Coco. Oh, am I keeping you awake, am I? All this painting must be very boring for little Coco. But hey, at least Charlie has now come in to join her. They can sit guard together. Although I've got no idea what they're going to be guarding me from, especially with Charlie having a little snooze. Now it's time to start the iguana. I have added permanent green, yellow green and cadmium primrose to my palette. I'm starting it off by doing a full flat base coat all over the iguana in permanent green. I'm now using the yellow green for the highlights and to map out the shape of the iguana. As you can see here, I'm also using the yellow green to draw out the details of the iguana, especially those folds and wrinkles around the face. It's quite watered down, so it'll be easy to paint over later. I've now added a little bit of white to that yellow green to brighten it up even more. And then I'll end up going back over with that yellow green and doing a bit of a wash over the top. This helps brighten up that yellow a whole heap. Here I'm using burnt umber and red oxide with a touch of white for those brown markings. I'm also using this mix for the shadowed areas especially in those folds and wrinkles of the iguana. 
And I've now gone back to that yellow green and I've added in a bit of that cadmium primrose. You will see me jump back and forth from the greens, the yellows and the browns. For those who have been watching me for a while, you guys know that I like to add lots and lots of layers, sometimes going over the same area two or three times just to build up that depth. And speaking of texture, when painting this iguana, the tooth of the canvas really is my best friend. The rough weave of the canvas kind of does half of the work for me. I can dry brush the lighter layers over the top for the final layer. And it kind of gives us that bubbly, iguanery texture. And now moving on to the eye, my favorite thing. I based it in red oxide, then gradually added cadmium primrose to the center of the eye and blended it out. I used burnt umber for the sides and for the shadows in the eye to give it that rounded effect and then used the same color for the pupil. While I wait for the eye to dry, I'm going in with a few more details in those shadowed areas using the same burnt umber and black mix that I was using in the eye. Let's detail up that smile and go back to the eye and add in those wrinkles to really finish it off. And with the eye done, it's now time to move on to the ice skates. Using the brown mix from the iguana, I added that to the white. I wanted to use up the paint that I already had and I was going for a creamy coloured ice skate. I'm using burnt umber for the soles of the ice skate and the black and the white for the blades. I used some straight black for the lace holes and a plain white for those laces. And for the ice cream cone, I'm using the same base from the ice skates. And then I gradually add in more of that brown mix to darken it up and add a few shadows and of course the little waffle pattern on the ice cream cone. While I was doing the ice cream cone, I realized I forgot to add a few details to the ice skates and I thought I might as well do the incense stick while I'm here complete with falling ash. On to our second last I word, the ice cream. I've chosen to do strawberry ice cream and banana ice cream, simply because they're my favorite flavors. To get the ice cream texture, I dry brush on some lighter colors and then go in with some shadows. This helps give it that fluffy texture. For the final I word, an ice cube. I've used the leftover midnight blue and white to create the ice cube on top of the ice cream. After a few finishing details, I week is done. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please consider hitting the like button, hitting the subscribe button, and don't forget that notification bell. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.